In our last episode, we looked at the anti-axis ballistic missiles of Denovia. In this episode, we will look at the Denovian Area Denial Long Range Ground Fires Weapon Systems. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, and this is 35 Fox Talks. Before getting into the meat of this episode, we want to remind our viewers additional educational material from other YouTube creators is available on our recommended videos playlist. As you can see, right now we have videos showing weapon systems linked to our part 1 video, along with the systems we will discuss in this video. Now picking up from where we left off, we can see that in our last episode we reviewed ground-based weapons platforms that have such long ranges it allows them to serve anti-access missions with an equal ability to support area denial missions. Today, we will look at two systems that can only support area denial long-range fires missions. They are the BM-30, aka 9 Kilo 58, aka 9 Alpha 52 Smirch Multiple Launch Rocket System, MLRS, and the BM-27, aka 9 Kilo 57, Uragan MLRS, along with the SS-21 Scarab, aka 9 Kilo 79 Tochka Close Range Ballistic Missile System. The BM-30 Smirch is a 12 round 300mm or 11.8 inch MLRS designed to counter enemy long range fires assets, tactical missile systems, and helicopter airstrips, as well as target command posts, vehicle formations, and manpower concentration areas. A Smirch unit is typically composed of 6 launchers and 6 transloaders. At the time of its creation in the 1980s, it was the most powerful multiple launch artillery rocket system in the world. Even today, after more than 30 years of service, it remains one of the deadliest systems of this type. The Smirch can fire a wide variety of missile models with different ranges and warheads. Warheads include high explosive, air burst, DPICM, mine dispersing, smoke, fuel air mixture, smart slash guided rockets, and chemical. The typical range of its 300mm rockets is a minimum of 20 kilometers and a maximum of 70 kilometers. Extended range rockets allow the Smirch to fire as far as 90 kilometers, but this type of ammunition is not in large supply. The launch sequence of the Smirch is mere seconds, and each launcher can fire a full salvo of 12 rockets in 38 seconds to blanket a 0.67 square kilometer or quarter mile square area with fire, overpressure, and shrapnel, thus the moniker Grid Square Killer. The launcher can then displace in under a minute to avoid counter-battery fire by driving to concealment or cover. Once under cover, the launcher and crew can then spend the next 36 minutes in relative safety while the system reloads. Yep, that's right, a Smirch can launch twice an hour, which is less than ideal in a high-intensity fight. It also leaves the system vulnerable to being targeted as it sits in one position to be slowly reloaded. The BM-27 is an older MLRS designed from the late 70s. It is capable of launching 16 220mm or 8 and 2 thirds inch rockets in 20 seconds between the ranges of 10 and 35 kilometers. The BM-27 then takes 15 to 20 minutes to reload, which is better, but still not great. Other than that, the BM-27 operates the same as the BM-30. The goal of both systems is to saturate entire grid squares with hellfire and reduce an enemy's ability to fight before making it to the front line. But that is all for the course of action episodes in the future. Meanwhile, the SS-21 Scarab marks a return to the ideas of the ballistic missile systems in Part 1. The difference here is the short range of the Scarab missile system. The system has three main variants. The Scarab A has a range of just 70 kilometers with a CEP of 150 meters. The Scarab B, aka Tochka U, has a range of 120 kilometers with a CEP of 95 meters. And the Scarab C can range 185 kilometers with an unknown CEP. Another limitation of the SS-21 is that unlike its larger cousin, the Iskander M, it follows a traditional ballistic trajectory making it far easier to intercept with counter-ballistic missile systems like the MIM-104 Patriot, the S-400, and HQ-9 surface-to-air defense systems. And with that, we close the books on talking about the equipment. In our next episode, we will discuss the fundamentals of how these systems are used. Until then, thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.